the, the best thing for me about working this way is that I can do everything confidently. I know that if some, if something eventually goes wrong, which it always does, everyone makes mistakes, but then it's easy to fix it. If I can't fix it, I'll just roll it back because the consequence of rolling back is minimal. If you have like a huge three month release, then taking, doing the decision of rolling back uh, involves the entire company. Yes. But just, I'll just roll back and I'll look at it after lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, I, 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 I think again, there's there's so much packed into into what you're saying. It seems to me, so 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 the the idea of making progress with this ultra fast feedback that we're all addicted to uh, in tiny steps, yeah, promotes this 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 is another of those techniques that promotes this sense of confidence and safety because each of the changes small. So if if, if the delta is small. Yeah. then the risk, the risk is small. And yeah, so even if something powerful. bad does happen, it's yeah. going to be easy to fix, easy to reverse, easy to spot the change, all of those things, and easy to measure the impact of the change as well. So, so there's all of these pluses that add up yeah. that, that kind of reinforce one another. Yeah, and there's a lot of things happening in finance in the EU right now with regulation. Yeah. And uh, all of the regulating authorities uh, and the banks themselves uh, if there's one thing they focus on now in our rather unstable world is risk. Yes. Um, and if you, if you boil what well, everything we do down to one thing is, uh, decreasing risk by doing yeah. a small, small things controlled, uh, uh, basically, uh, dotting our eyes and everything like that, just doing everything properly. Yeah. So there's no. Um, there's, uh, there's basically low risk and high, uh, high frequency of deploys goes hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. It all fits together. And that, that's what I think is uh, really motivating. And I think it's also cool that this extreme programming that was like invented uh, 25 years ago, it could never yeah. be more relevant than, than it is today. Like if you Absolutely. take all 10 years back when I worked in three weeks releases. Mm -hmm. Then we also, we all, we did the test driven development then as well, but now it's even more, uh, I think it's even more important because the quality you build in is going into production in 10 minutes. Yes. So, and, and, and I think one of the difficult part with this slicing up is to learn to slice while you're building something. Yes. Uh, and that, that is something it's, that we see here in our uh, organization as well, to think that way you have to put as little as you can into production, uh, with maybe feature flags and dead code and stuff, just, just to have things uh, in, in production. And then you have to think in another way, but still though, if you know that your code is going into production in one hour, then, then you start to think differently than you, if you, if it's in, in five days, but yes. this, this technique with, uh, with slicing, that's, it's kind of a, a new, new way of thinking, but, uh, we love it. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.